Are you trying to use the IBC or the inter-blockchain communication protocol? In today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how you can use this on multiple exchanges, or at least in the Kepler or the Osmosis exchange, which are basically communicating together. Okay, here we are inside of the Osmosis exchange. And as you can see, I have the exchange pulled up. I'm connected to the Kepler wallet, it's right here. This is it, and if I sign out, you know, I lose access to the Kepler wallet, but this is the wallet that Osmosis has decided to integrate into their exchange. So this is by default their, wa their wallet that they're using. Not sure if even you can use a different wallet, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just say you have a Kepler wallet, everyone does, because this is the wallet that they're using. So right now, if you go to the Kepler wallet, or at least mine, check it out. I can go into the Kepler wallet and you can see here that I have some Sentinel. Now that I have these coins, I wanna try and put this into the osmosis. Well, if you claim these coins, kinda of like how you can over here, I could claim, see this? I could claim these coins right here, claim that. And the funny thing about osmosis is it's integrated into the osmosis exchange. So just by claiming these coins, they will automatically pop up inside the osmosis exchange however um, things like sentinel or things like akash you kind of have to transfer them into the exchange so you don't really want to go over here you don't want to go to send and then low and then put in the address and all that you could just go right into the exchange itself go to your assets and if you go down for example to sentinel right just deposit, just hit deposit, and you see it's already connected. The IBC is connected from the exchange to the wallet, so we're just gonna try and bring this in. Right, we're gonna hit max, I always hit low, always hit low, and bam, it's transacting. It failed though, well wait a minute, why did it fail? This is another issue with, uh, you know, this is another issue with IBC protocol. Sometimes it takes money to put money in. So let's try this again. Let's donate. But this time, how about we do this? Let's do, how about we do 5.8 like that, just so that they have a little bit to work with. We'll deposit this and then we'll hit low again and we'll approve that. So as you can see, we gave them a little bit of, you know, if you think of like Ethereum, it's working kind of like that. They have to have a little bit of coins to work with because of, <laughs> you know, transaction fees. So, okay, we got the Sentinel in. So now that it's in, uh, we can go to the trade and you'll see it here. Check it out. Go down to Sentinel and we've got it. See, it's, it's inside. So basically the... Any other, if it's any other coin besides Osmosis, you're gonna have to use that deposit button. You go over here to assets, and then you just hit whatever coin you have that you're staked from or that you're earning from. You just come over here and you just uh, deposit it in. So like another example, I'm pretty sure I have some Atom that I'm staking and I'm earning some. You can bring this in because it's connected from the wallet to the exchange. So that's all you have to do, really this is a way for you to put it in and to get it out. Now, let's just say that you want to take this out of the exchange. This is also another problem that a lot of people are having. Let's say they want to take this back. They want to withdraw this and they want it to take it back to the Kepler wallet. Well, you could put max here and then withdraw. And sometimes, actually many times for people, this will fail. So the reason why it fails is because it's taking, you know, some fees for you to take it out of the exchange. So if it fails multiple times, even if, for example, you take this down by, let's say, five like that, and you try to you know, send it, and it doesn't work still, this is the default method for everyone. We're gonna go here, we're gonna go to, um, let's close this out real quick, because it's loading. Let's go again, we're gonna withdraw this, we're gonna put max, and then we're gonna set the gas. When you set the gas, everyone says, this is the default to always make it work. You're gonna put, right now it's uh, 500,000, let's put 600,000. So you could do like, for example, 5.1, or let's go back, do like 5.6, and that should raise the gas fee enough so that you can take it off. And of course, there's always another workaround, just bring it lower, like a seven, for example, and you should be able to withdraw that back into the Kepler wallet. So. 
um, I can approve that and this thing will transact here. It's working and it should send it back to my Kepler wallet. Transaction completed. So basically to simplify this guys, um, IBC is basically, if you think about it, just think of like a bridge that you could walk across. The Osmosis Exchange and the Kepler wallet are synced together. Um, Osmosis coin doesn't need to use the IBC, but every other coin does. So if you have any other coin besides Osmosis, then you're going to go down to uh, your assets here, and you're going to find what coin that is. You're going to either deposit or withdraw that coin if it's in the Kepler wallet and it's earning from staking. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty simplified, guys. So I hope this helps you understand how to use the IBC. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I always love to help people learn about, you know, new exchanges, new technology, new coins, new crypto. We're doing a lot of things on this channel. So thank you guys. And if you found value in this, put a like on this video and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for watching. This is Godson at Staking Academy, and I will see you on the next episode. Godson out.